welcome to Colleagues Getting Coffee in the van. And I'm here today with the glorious, beautiful Alice Carroll. Blimey, thank you. <laughs> We're both a little bit windswept. Little bit, and yeah. also the van is in a hurricane currently, so everything is moving. So if the cameras are like this, it's rocking. It's rocking. The van is rocking. For the wrong reasons. <laughs> no, the right reasons the right today. Reasons. Epic chat. There you go. Exactly. So exactly. Um, I've got a little, well, we've got our chocolate, we've got our tea. Chocolate tea. We're ready to go. Happy days. I'm going to spring a little topic on you. Okay. She has no idea and I'm really excited. Alice Carroll, can you tell me about muchiness? Oh, can I tell you about muchiness? You must have known <laughs> I was going to ask you that. You must have known. <laughs> Oh, muchiness is just, oh, <laughs> it's become our code word on LinkedIn, I love it. hasn't it? I absolutely love it. Um, but it comes from, of course, the wonderful mm -hmm. Alice in Wonderland yeah. and the Mad Hatter saying, you've lost your muchiness. Mm -hmm. You used to be much muchier. And, and actually, I, it's one of the many quotes I use in terms of working out how we are. So mm -hmm. losing our muchiness, muchiness is all about that. In it, inidentifiable, inexplicable kind of mojo mm. that we can lose when, I don't know, we're not living to our values, when mm. we are under too much stress. It's, it's when we lose it and we don't often see it ourselves. Someone else mm. usually notices it first. Like you've lost your shine. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell, you know, even on a Zoom, you can talk to someone and you can think, mm. Hmm. It's funny, I've had a client the other day and, and they just said, you're not smiling as much as normal. And I thought, God, I didn't hmm. even notice I wasn't smiling as much. It's interesting, but isn't it? But I thought, yeah, I was a little bit offended because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like a female thing, isn't it? Smile. But we're yeah. not always happy all the time. But I think maybe, you know, they did mean like you're just not quite giving the same energy. But it's, that's interesting as well, though, isn't it? Because I know loads of the talk these days is about this sort of toxic positivity. Everyone's mm. like, everything's fine. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I know I, I was very guilty of that. You know, if you can smile enough and slide gracefully over all the cracks in the mm. ice, hope it doesn't, hope yeah. it doesn't open up and expose you. But yeah, yeah. it's not necessarily about how much you're smiling, whether you've got that energy and that vibe. Mm. I've, a lot of people have said to me, what if you reined it in a bit? You might, <laughs> you might actually have a different muchness, muchiness about you mm -hmm. that is easier to maintain. Because sometimes we can be, you know, we can really bring ourselves almost too much to a room and to a conversation. So I, it's so interesting, I have a real opinion on this. Mm. So I recently, I've been on anti-anxiety medication recently because mm -hmm. over Christmas I just felt really like a whole year of this and mm. I had loads of work, but it was just everything. My brain was just like, I don't mm. like this anymore. Um, but the me medication made me sort of not feel anything. Yeah, numb. And now I've come, I'm come, I've come off it, and actually I feel much muchier. Like I can feel the highs now, which is nice because you miss it when you don't have it. Yeah, that equaliser piece is mm. not always mm. welcome, isn't it? It's really interesting because I'm, I'm on anti-anxiety pills and have been since I had my major fall off a cliff down a rabbit hole in 2015. Mm. And I had this very, um, a guy who I kind of literally took his every word as gospel because he seemed to understand me as a psychiatrist who just said, the minute you feel normal, mm. whatever that is, yeah. um, start the clock and don't do anything about your prescription for mm. at least two years. And of course, for me, that was in 2016 and by 2017, my marriage was falling apart and then the company I was director in was falling apart and then I had two knee replacements and a divorce and then you know every time I think oh I'll, I'll look and see if things are normal now I look yeah. up and I think oh, oh go back on deck <laughs> but, what, but what I find really interesting is I I still feel extremes and I wonder if for me <laughs> for me actually it, it still balances me you mm -hmm. know um I still feel like I feel yeah. loads but I think but you it can feel... quell it can yeah. quell can't it yeah yeah, I think it depends on your personality type and about like how much muchy you are, maybe, or how much yeah. energy you have and where you direct it. And if you also direct some of that energy back to you. Back in. Because so often, if you're high energy, you're put like da -da 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 -da, out into yeah. the world, but actually you're never pulling it back and saying, well, hang on a minute, fill my cup. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, that's totally. A big one for me. The self care thing. Yeah. Um, the the there was this amazing guy who a, a guy called GD. He's a complete kind of energy. It might seem a bit woo woo, but oh my goodness, he understood me so quickly. Mm. I've only had about three or four conversations with him, but he actually said, "What would it be like if you, if instead of throwing and flinging your energy out left, right, and centre, you channeled it?" Mm. And I actually ended up writing a poem. This is not. This is not the work thing. This is the other me. The, mm. Well, the, the creativity I've discovered since I gave myself some time. Well, one of your business values is play. Yeah, Writing totally that. Is play. Yeah, and, and I wrote it and I called it From Frenergy to Zenergy because I talked about I had this frenetic energy all yeah. the time and it was like, oh, if I shine enough and throw enough things out, yeah. you know, everyone will see that I'm energetic and that I'm mm. muchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the energy was like uh, redirecting it into me, so there was more of a constant glow. And actually, I don't. Have you ever come across this app, Checking In? No. It's an absolutely amazing app. Christy um, rec- um, introduced me to it. There's so many things out there, aren't there? But mm. this works for me. It's a it's a free app, and every day it reminds you to check in, and you have to give one word. Oh, nice. And then it asks you to score your energy levels not to ten, mm-hmm. and give context to your word. So it takes you. 30 seconds mm. but then you save all your reflections and you can choose to go deeper or not but really often my word is if, it, if I'm on a good day and I can feel it I'm like my word is energy no, I love <laughs> so you can create your own yeah, yeah, yeah. vernacular for whatever it is you need it to be and what you've done with all of this stuff and I think I suppose through your life learning and your lessons and your experience you actually you do help businesses with this in a funny kind of way because you you do mental wealth mm. and this is all the same thing isn't it really yeah yeah it's like how and I love the analogy that you have around bank accounts and like you know are you in savings are you overdrawn like are you in debt I love it so, yeah what's that it's really interesting because obviously that was my kind of exciting our new concept last mm. year which has landed and it does resonate but I think I've ended up by evolving and mm. working with more and more people this year, I've seen some other shifts in it. So for mm. me, a missing link at the beginning was the difference between an organisation and people, individuals. Yeah. And, and it turns out, when we're in burnout, we don't necessarily want to be to- told you're in debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that is a really important way to see that analogy. So mm. you're overdrawn, we can't possibly start getting you to to save for your son's college until you've paid out your credit cards mm. mentally yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but but looking at that from an individual's perspective as let's let's give you support like almost like a booster package to mm. get you into credit um, what I really started playing with though was this idea that if, if my my big message is let's let's invest in everyone's mental wealth that's my kind of strap line isn't it and, and everyone raises their game and the rest rises with it you know what mm. da da what I have also discovered, though, is that there needs to be something that tethers that mm. to an organisation for leaders to understand what it means for them. So mm. this year, and, and it is a journey, that one of the Zooms I was doing this morning was with two owners of an organisation where they completely recognise the need to connect with, invest in their entire workforce mm. and, and making sure that that is front and centre for the good of the company, as well as having a genuine desire to do it knowing how to start doing that and and what to do and what you're enabling that's really hard um which is why i ended up coming up with and i worked with tim on it didn't i the fast balance so looking at from a from a leader's perspective are we do we have an enabling enough culture that Mm. people people can thrive because otherwise the danger is invest in all these people who then go well, I'll go and work somewhere that's a bit nicer. Or well, if the leadership, <laughs> if it doesn't start at the top yeah. and the leaders don't show the way or go the way, then all these people are being invested in and lovely and they love life. But they look up and they're like, oh, well, you're actually not a great example for me. I'm going to go over to this company because their culture yeah. shows that their leaders are vulnerable and open and talk about things. And, and because the premise that I, I work on, uh, you know, which is not, not unique to me, I mean, it's, mm. a, it's a very common one. It's Carl Jung who started the conversation. Is, it's self-awareness first. So, mm. And that's that whole hummingbee story, like uh, discover the beauty of the hummingbird and of yourself and all the unique mm. stuff you bring to then add to a team, not to be quelled by it. So there's this whole, this whole balance. And if you don't 
embrace that and then find a way to connect to the organisation you're in. You'll just go elsewhere for it once you're kind yeah. of awake to it. Yeah, for sure. So I, I know when I've done this as a as a company with a company I won't mention the name of but we had people coming up to us at the end saying things like I've applied for a new job this is great it's given me the power and it's like we don't think we want that to happen but we, we do we do want people to feel awake enough to challenge and yeah, yeah, yeah. to want stuff so they're either fully engaged where they are or or they go and I love the word awake like awake enough what a lovely word I think we all should be more awake and more aware. I think aware. I've ended up meaning to say aware more than awake mm. because of all the wokeness out mm. there. It feels that that, that doing, feels like it brings other connotations, doesn't well, I'm it? I'm doing a philosophy course at the moment. We're talking about being awake and we're talking about um, well, like waking dreams. And like, when, you know, those moments when you drive the car and you no idea how you did the journey. Oh, God, yeah. Absolutely. Actually, Autopilot. Yeah, yeah. We're so on rails that we actually need to wake up yes. and be like, oh, I'm aware. I'm aware and I'm in the moment and this is my life and this is what I'm totally. doing. Totally. It's so, the mindful awareness piece, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That that can it, it can all be relegated along with purpose and values and behaviours to the sort of bullshit bingo. And unless we help, you know, my, I, I just feel like for me it's all about translating it so that mm. it means something to people every day. Yeah, for uh, sure. Give me a tool I can use. Mm. On that thing and that last note, one thing that someone could do right now to become more muchy or to establish some more mental wealth what would you one thing one thing do you know what because of what we've just talked about mm -hmm. i would say check in with yourself yeah. you know that is just it is just the beginning of a very amazing potential journey mm -hmm. how am i today how yeah. am i feeling and keep a record it only needs to be a minute either on an app or in a journal how am i today what my energy levels like and why is that yeah and what am i glad about without yeah yeah just checking so in pause yeah check in i basically have a little diary i have two diaries both for the whole year one is a one page and i write just one quote from the day or it can be anything mm. and it just sums up my day so today actually it might be like wake up or be more muchy mm. um but then i have a whole day planner when I write just whatever comes to my brain there's no pressure no parameters it's mm. just like just empty that out a little bit and you know everyone kind of knows that journaling is great yeah. and if we can do it wonderful I, I I'm not great at the habit mm. of doing it every day every place but I think if the starting point is check in with yourself mm. the next thing is of course thinking what do I need to do to feel better today or feel yeah. good today step you step, know so step. then yeah. so then for me I always do my lunchtime breathe the zoom with Elliot from yoga joyride yeah, 12 to 12 15 resets my day I, yeah. I, I work my day around it because I know I need to pause and literally yeah. take 90 breaths but yeah, yeah, so yeah. the starting point is checking in because what works for us all is it's just so different yeah. it's yeah. just yeah there's an amazing author called uh, Matthew Haig or Matt Haig and he mm. does like um all sorts of books around anxiety and depression but he says add a comma to your day which I think is if you're checking in or you're breathing yeah. just add that moment I love that yeah yeah darling yeah. thanks for coming and chatting to me in the my van. chocolate's melting oh, I'm gonna have to just God, eat it now yeah yeah the van has been very rocky so I'm interested That's to see how the finish rocky. turns out but hey thank you so much for being here oh it's been a pleasure of course oh. I love the van me too <laughs>